Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Talisman Harry Potter. Talisman Harry Potter is brought to you by the Op. It's for two to six players, ages 11 and up, and games generally run 90 to 120 minutes. Lord Voldemort awaits the most competent of witches and wizards for a fateful demonstration of bravery or obedience. In Talisman Harry Potter, take on the daring roles of members of the Order of the Phoenix or the Death Eaters in a fleeting race to gain access to the Dark Lord himself. Meet and present him with one of the Deathly Hollows as a dutiful Death Eater or use it to defeat the leader once and for all. The object of the game is to be the first of the characters to reach Lord Voldemort in the Great Hall, either to end his evil influence or to prove your loyalty. The first player to do this will win the game. To reach the end, you'll need to collect various objects, gain followers, and improve your magic and might. Most importantly, you will need to locate a hollow to enter the Great Hall. Without one of these powerful relics, there is no hope of completing your task. First, let's take a look at this main board. So many locations here that will be very familiar to Harry Potter fans. Now, there are three areas of the board. You have the outer region, you have the middle region, and the inner region where Lord Voldemort starts. He'll start in the Great Hall. Hopefully, you're going to be dealing with him later in the game as you gain in stats and power. Now, each of these locations are really great because you'll see icons and dice icons and card icons that are going to direct you to what to do in the different locations, which is really handy. You'll either roll dice, get results, you'll be drawing counter cards, spell cards, things like that. Lots of directions that can go. And of course you have your cast of characters. You've got Dumbledore, you've got Harry Potter of course, you've got the Malfoys, you've got Hagrid, just to name a few, all very recognizable. And of course, depending on who you pick, will determine how you're aligned. However, you can just randomly deal out characters to the players, which is what they suggest in the rulebook. But we allowed everyone to pick the character they wanted to play. Now, the thing here is the alignment, right? You've got either Order of the Phoenix, you're on the good side, trying to defeat Lord Voldemort, or you're a Death Eater, and you're trying to prove your worth to Lord Voldemort. So lots of interesting twists and turns, especially as you deal with your fellow players on either side of the coin, so to say. And of course your cards, your player cards, are going to have different stats based on the character as well as which side of the card that you're playing. And you have a stat wheel where you'll be tracking your health, you'll be tracking your magic and your might. Magic and might is what you're going to be primarily using in battles and things of that nature and tests that you'll be encountering across the board and each character will have different types of things they'll be starting with. In the case of Dumbledore, he starts with two spell cards randomly drawn from the pile. You also are going to get some tokens here. You have fate tokens, which are going to allow you to reroll dice, and you have galleons, which is the money in the game. Now you're gonna be collecting followers throughout the course of the game, and you're gonna be collecting spells, and you're gonna be collecting uh, different types of objects, but there's all card limits to be mindful of as well. Now let's take a quick look at Lord Voldemort. He has his own card and his stats are going to vary based on where he is located. And as you deal with him and battle against him, you'll be rolling a dice if you happen to win and battle against him. And there's different results at the bottom because he will be moving around the board. So you may encounter him outside the normal win conditions of having a hollow and battling him to the end or proving your worth. So based on where he is in the game, we'll determine that. Now, how does he move? Well, when you roll dice to move, if you roll a one, you're gonna also roll a dice for him to move and he'll move around the board, like I said. And obviously you're trying to maneuver him maybe to attack the other players and things of that nature. So what you're doing on your turn is very, very straightforward. Now, as you play this game, you know, the different player counts will really increase the game length for sure, especially at that full six player count. There's a lot going on and everybody's making lots of decisions and encountering the different locations. But what you're doing is basically rolling a dice and moving. You always are doing that first. And then you have to encounter a location. Lots of different things are gonna happen here and there are icons and text on the locations. You can be drawing cards like encounter cards, spell cards, or you might roll dice. So lots of different things can happen here. You may battle with enemies of opposite alignments, of course. Now, some enemies might be neutral, but you'll still have to deal with them. And you'll resolve any additional instructions that happen to be on these different locations. And there's observers and places. Places are neat because you get things like Gringotts Vault that you'll be rolling dice 
and resolving and it stays in that location and you can go back and use it later. So lots of interesting things there. And then of course, you're gonna be collecting followers which really aid you in the game. And obviously these followers have to be of the correct alignment, your character's alignment. And potentially you're gonna be getting galleons and objects. Perhaps you'll go to the store and collect objects there, or you're gonna be gaining objects from the uh, encounter deck when you pull cards and so forth. So the other interesting thing is that because you do have hand limits, you may need to ditch followers. So if you do, you'll just drop them in that location, which could be a help or hindrance to other players, absolutely. So that will definitely aid you in the game. Now, another key thing of this game is advantage. So you have a coin or a token for advantage for Order of the Phoenix or for the Death Eaters. And it's basically gonna give you a plus one to attack and a negative to the other player that has of the opposite alignment. So the thing here though is that when you encounter a space and you have to draw an encounter card, this will flip. But there are other encounter cards like events or observers that may cause us to flip again, hopefully to your advantage in that case. So, and you may have spells in hand that can flip it. So you will do that before you enter into battle because obviously you need advantage as much as possible. So let's take a look at battles. So battles are all about comparing stats. And regardless if you're fighting a card from the encounter deck, you're fighting a fellow player or Lord Voldemort himself, it's all pretty much the same. You're rolling dice and comparing stats. So in the case of encounter cards though, you have a couple things that can be different. You can be doing magic battles or might battles. So might is your physical strength obviously and magic is your power, your magic in the game. And you are going to be going up against your fellow players and Lord Voldemort and that's always a magic battle. So those are the stats that are gonna be mindful when you're doing all the different types. But again, you can have objects, you can have followers, you can have spells that can augment all your scores big time. So the, don't forget to figure those in. And of course the advantage, if you have advantage in the battle in this particular round. So keep those things in mind and then total up your score and whoever is the highest will win. And if you do lose, you're gonna lose a life as well. Now the thing is that you can have ties which will do nothing and the turn just ends. But you also have the advantage of using fate. So before you compare stats, you can say, oh, I didn't really like my roll. I'm gonna use a fate token and re-roll. But then you're stuck with that new value. So keep that in mind as well as you battle it out. And Lord Voldemort, again, he moves if someone rolls a one. And whoever moves him potentially can move him into a space where you are located and then you'll have to battle him. And of course, that's not the battle to end the game. In order to defeat Lord Voldemort or show him how you're worthy, you'll have to venture into the Great Hall and have a hollow in hand in order to do this. And it's important to note that you cannot battle players of the same alignment. I mean, why would you? They're on your side after all. And also you can collect enemy cards as trophies. This is fantastic because for every five points of magic, you're gonna get one point added to your stats. You turn those cards in, but it's an interesting aspect for sure, kind of dark actually, as you collect trophies of your enemies to turn them in to increase your stats in might or magic. So in order to win the game, you're going to have to deal with Lord Voldemort. And in order to do that, you have to have a hollow. How do you get hollows? Well. There's some different ways, but one of the ways is the Quidditch pitch. You'll enter into a competition or a challenge, I guess it is, and then you'll roll your dice to determine what that challenge is. You'll have to do it right away though. And also, if maybe you were at Hagrid's hut and you rolled dice and you just got a hollow that way, there's some different ways to do it for sure. But you need one hollow in order to enter the Great Hall. Now, moving between the different rings, you have to go from the King's Cross Station. So that's one of your first big challenges. You have to have a magic level of nine to move to the middle ring. And then going through the Hogwarts gate, you're gonna to have to roll off dice against your stats to see if you can enter into this inner ring. Hopefully by that time, you've increased your stat value, you've gained in power, spells and items, and you have a hollow and you've entered the Great Hall. Again, you're gonna battle against Lord Voldemort, that dice and stat comparison roll off. And regardless, if you are a Death Eater or a Order of the Phoenix, you're just trying to defeat him in battle. Or the Phoenix, obviously you're trying to take him out completely. Death Eater, you're trying to gain his respect and join his forces. Either way, you have to defeat him in battle. And of course, the first player to do so in the Great Hall will win the game.
All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview, and everything you've seen here is done and published. Yes, this game is available now, so go check it out on the Ops website. Now, the thing is that this is very much a streamlined version of Talisman. In the back of the rule book, though, you can add in rules to make it feel more traditional if you want. But I like how quickly this plays. I did it with a three-player game, and it played very well. And encountering spaces is just a ton of fun. And gaming the different cards, I really like all the different spells, the possibilities there, and objects, and followers add so much to what you're doing. So it definitely is quick and easy to play, but you do have to deal with your fellow players quite often. And of course, Lord Voldemort. So folks, ultimately, if this looks like something that would be of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me, and until next time, we'll see you at the table.